thank you for joining Wars of the Roses as we continue with part six of the Hiram Abiff series, Hiram Abiff and the Knights Templar. The three assassins of Hiram Abiff symbolize the three betrayers of the Knights Templars and Hiram, the Grand Master Mole, and according to the ritual of the Grand Lodge of the Three Globes, a German degree, the lights around the coffin signify the flames of the pile on which Mole was burnt. To the Rosicrucians and to certain German lodges, Hiram is Christ, and the three assassins, Judas that betrays, Peter that denies him, and Thomas that disbelieves his resurrection. The symbolic degrees of ancient craft Freemasonry, the three blows Hiram Abiff received, are said to be typical of the trials and temptations to which man is subjected in youth and manhood and to death, whose victim he becomes in old age. Hence, the three assassins are the three stages of human life in the advanced degrees, such as the Kadashis, which are founded on the Templar system commonly credited to Ramsey. The reference is naturally made to the destruction of the order, which was affected by the combined influences of tyranny, superstition, and ignorance, which are therefore symbolized by the three blows, while the three assassins are also said to be represented by Squin de Florence, Naafidi, and the prior of Mount Fulcum. The three perjurers who swore away the lives of de Malay and his knights in the astronomical theory of Freemasonry, which makes it a modern modification of the ancient sun worship, a theory advanced by Ragan. The three blows are symbolic of the destructive influences of the three winter months, by which Hiram, or the sun, is shorn of his vivifying power. These Zetons has generalized the Templar theory, and supposing Hiram to be the symbol of eternal reason, interprets the blows as the attacks of those vices which deprave and finally destroy humanity. However, interpreted for a special theory, Hiram the Builder always represents, in the science of Masonic symbolism, the principle of good, and then the three blows are the contending principles of evil. Some Masonic historians take the allegory literally, almost always a mistake, and state that what was lost was the word of the Grand Master or the secrets of the Master. What the Templars had lost, literally, was their wealth, respect, and power. The man being initiated as a master by acting out the murder is being turned into another Hiram. Every master takes that role and becomes Hiram, a name by which Masons sometimes address each other. He is the son of the widow, and it is his task to replace that which was lost. The leadership, the direction, the work required to finish, the building of the Order of the Temple, which was brutally stopped by beatings and murder. On the 19th day of March 1314, Jacques de Molay, the last Grand Master of the Knights Templar, was burned on a pyre erected upon that point of the Islet of the Seine at Paris, where afterwards was erected the statue of King Harry IV. See the Indian religions by Hargrave Jennings. It is mentioned as a tradition in some of the accounts of the Burnies, writes Jennings, that Mole, ere he expired, summoned Clement, the Pope who had pronounced the bull of abolition against the order and had condemned the Grand Master to flames, to appear within forty days before the Supreme Eternal Judge and Philip, the King, to the same awful tribunal within the space of a year. Both predictions were fulfilled. 
the close relationship between Freemasonry and the original Knights Templar has caused the story of Chowram to be linked with the martyrdom of Jacques de Molay. According to this interpretation, the three ruffians who cruelly slew their master at the gates of the temple because he refused to reveal the secrets of his order represent the Pope, the King, and the Executioners. De Malay died maintaining his innocence and refusing to disclose the philosophic and magical arcana of the Templars. 30th Degree Knights Kadash Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite The history of the Knights Templar is revealed to him. It is also explained to him that the Knights Kadash do not fight to revenge De Malay. Rather, they fight in the present world to oppose tyranny and to protect the weak. And then, it is essentially left to him. He knows what tyranny is. He has been made aware that a king, a president, a congress, or a school board can enforce it. He has been assured that tyranny is not something that happened only in the past. It is something which happens every day in his world. He may encounter examples of it a dozen times a day, and a dozen times a day he will have to decide whether to let tyranny continue or to oppose it. If he truly understands the 30th degree, he realizes that he has undertaken a very great responsibility. But a true knight Kadash also understands that if no one fights, the battle is lost before it starts. According to scripture, Hiram was not an architect but a master worker. In bronze and brass, he was not murdered but lived to see the temple completed and then went back to his home. The clues to Masonic origin and purpose are found in the allegorical legend, not in the scriptures. As we search British history to find an unfinished temple as a basis for, and exclusively, British secret society, we find just one answer. In the religious order that often called itself by that simple name alone, the temple. Jacques de Molay and his predecessors signed documents over the title, Magister Templi, Master of the Temple, and that temple, taking its name from the Temple of Solomon, certainly was left unfinished upon the murder of its masters who also had been tortured to reveal their secrets by three assassins, who ultimately destroyed them. Not Jubala, Jubalo, and Jubalong, but Philip the Fair of France, Pope Clement V, and the Order of the Knights of Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem. Every twelve years, reminding us of the twelve fellows that Solomon sent, in parties of three to search for Hiram, Two ships sell out into the world in search of learning, that in either of these ships there should be a mission of three of the fellows or brethren of Solomon's house, whose errand was only to give us knowledge of the affairs and state of those countries to which they were designed and especially of the sciences, arts, manufacturers and inventors of all the world, and withal to bring us books instruments and patterns in every kind. Twelve fellow craftsmen are exploring the four points of the compass. Are not these twelve the twelve great world religions, each seeking in its own way for that which was lost in the ages past and the quest of which is the birthright of man? Is not the quest for reality in a world of illusions the task for which each comes into the world. We are here to gain balance in a sphere of unbalance, to find rest in a restless thing, to unveil illusion, and to slay the dragon of our own animal natures, as David, king of Israel, gave to the hands of his son Solomon the task he could not accomplish. So each generation gives to the next the work of building the temple, or rather, rebuilding the dwelling of the Lord, which is on Mount Moriah, 
Eliphas Levi points out the great resemblance which exists between King Hyarches and the fabulous Hiram, of whom Solomon procured the cedars of Lebanon and the gold of Ophir. We would like to know whether modern masons, even grand lecturers, and the most intelligent craftsmen belonging to important lodges understand who the Hiram is, whose death they combine together to avenge. The compass and square appear allegorically as the unfinished seal of Solomon, directly symbolizing the unfinished temple. The compass and square hidden in the seal of Solomon provide a graphic link impossible to ignore, a link between the major badge of Freemasonry and the interpretation of the building of Solomon's temple in the legend of Hiram of Beth as symbolized by the unfinished seal of Solomon. That legend, which is the central feature of Masonic ritual, adds credence to the Templar origin, especially since it is based upon an allegorical temple whose construction was halted because of the beating and murder of Grand Master Hiram of Beth. We know that the real Temple of Solomon was fully completed and in use for several centuries. The Temple of Solomon that was not completed can only be the order of the poor fellow soldiers of Christ and the Temple of Solomon, the Knights Templar. The dead master is replaced by the initiate who is raised to the degree of Master Mason. He not only becomes Hiram of Beth, in the ritual drama, but also assumes the Grand Master's interrupted objective, the completion of the temple by keeping the secret society alive and growing, symbolically rescuing the order of the temple from the sensation ordered for it by King and Pope. The Templar, or poor fellow society of the Holy House of the Temple, intended to be rebuilt took as their models in the Bible the warrior masons of Zorobabel who worked holding the sword in one hand and the trowel in the other. Therefore it was that the sword and the trowel were the insignia of the Templars who subsequently, as will be seen, concealed themselves under the name of Brethren Masons. This name in the French adopted by way of secret reference to the builders of the second temple, was corrupted in English into Freemasons. As Papagor de Corton was into Peter Gower of Grattan in England, Kaharam or Kuhuram, a name misrendered into Hiram from an artisopher in brass and other metals, became the chief builder of the Hegel Kadash the holy house of the temple, the, and the words Baner and Banane, yet appear in the Masonic degrees, meaning builder and builders. This uninterrupted chain from modern Freemasonry to the Knights Templar leads us back to the important initiative schools of Egypt in which certain adherents had attained the highest degree of initiation. Among them, Moses, Pythagoras, and Plato are believed to be among these high initiates. This secret legend is the same as that of the Carprocations, which is that Jesus chose some of the apostles and confided to them a secret science, which was transmitted afterwards to the priest of the Order of the Knights Templars and through them to the building fraternities, down to the present Freemasons of the Swedish Rite. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.